Okay, I'm going to show the finished products here of the uh, 38 rim fire um, uh, experiment. This is powder coated and swaged to spec. And um, I'll talk more about that in more in the video here. But this has got a <clears throat> this has got a uh, complete layer of powder coat over the, the whole thing. There's powder coat on the bearing surface. On there's powder coat on the on the uh, heel and in the hollow. So it's completely sealed by powder coat. And it was powder, it was swaged after it was powder coated. So um, it's it's to the to the right specs. The powder coat didn't throw off the 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 uh, specs like it often does. If you just powder coat bullets out of a mold, um, <clears throat> they get bigger, obviously, because the powder coat takes up room. A lot of guys run them through um, sizing dies, but this is this is um, run through a swage, so that's all done. This one's completely done. 120 grain bullet for a 38 rimfire, complete. Now this one, wait, not that one. Where did I put it? This is a uh, 150 grain. Same deal. But I made a mistake on this one. Let's see if I can see it here. A little bit of the powder coat scraped off in a spot. I think it was right there. Yeah, you can see where that's shiny. That's where the powder coat scraped off because it went into the um, swaging die cockeyed a little bit. And that's a reject. It, it'll shoot, but <clears throat> I fear that because of the, the, um, the friction difference between the powder coat, which is very slippery, and the lead, which is basically sticky if you go to, if, when it goes down the barrel of a gun, um, that'll throw it off. It won't be accurate. So that's a reject. But that's 150 grain. I made a bunch of 150 grains, or not a bunch, a few 150 grains and a few 120 grains. And so the, these are the these are the two sizes out of the same um, swaging die. Now. I started with molded bullets. This is a nine mil. These are rejects because they didn't mold well. But um, <clears throat> I started with uh, uh, molded bullets. This is a not for a nine millimeter. It's um, 356 diameter, 120 and yeah, between 120 and 122 grain. And this is a uh, 38 special wad cutter, 150 grain. So these are what I used for cores. This one ended up making this after swaging. Whoops, wrong one. This one ended up making this after swaging. Now I swaged it to a, a smaller diameter in a different swaging die. Then I powder coated it. Then I swaged it to the correct diameter. Same thing with this. I swaged this to um, to get rid of to get rid of the the grease grooves because they make funny lines when you when you uh, if you powder coat that first and then swage it, you'll see funny lines. The grease grooves won't be there, but it'll be weird. So I, I swaged this to a shape similar to this, only undersized, powder coat it, and then final swage it. Now these are a couple, this is when I swage it, and which will be explained later in this in this video. This is the excess, a ring of excess lead. This is a particularly fat 
or heavy ring usually don't have that much excess. I, I didn't have it set right when I did this one. Nor this one. This is a little heavy also. This I rejected. I don't know why. It's probably... It probably got skinned a little somewhere. But anyway, um, <clears throat> these rings pick off. Now this one's harder to pick off because I didn't swage it hard. It was a light swage. And, and, and when they come together, I'll show that in the, in the video more. When I run it in the press, bottoming out the press, is they, the two parts of the die meet each other and they, they, they act as an anvil to cut that lead off. And you have to push down pretty hard to get them to cut. Otherwise you have them like this and you have to work a little bit to pull that ring off. A ring of excess lead. I call it a bonnet usually. But um, anyway, that's, what, that's how they come out. Only with a smaller ring usually if I'm doing it right if I'm making it the like this ring is probably four four grams I mean four grains so that bullet will be less than 120 grains so I want to dial that in so it's got a little less a little bit less uh, um, excess lead so the the weight of the bullet is closer to what I want so now I'm going to move on to the next oh this one is 150 grain with no powder coat on it I swaged it to the final size without clear powder coat it's hard to tell the difference but uh, wait a minute no this one this one was swaged pure lead without powder coat and this one's got powder coat clear powder coat hard to tell the difference you can tell but not real easy so when you're shooting them when you load the bullets they don't look they don't have like lipstick red and crazy green and funny colored bullets I don't like that I like bullets to look like lead or copper I have some copper looking powder coat, but it doesn't work that well. So now I'll show you the rest of the process here. Okay, these are the pieces of my, this is my swaging setup for making healed hollow base bullets, lead swaged heel hollow base bullets. This is the, the, the point forming die. And it is three piece or four. Take these off here so I can get it through. This has got a an adjustable point die that goes through um, an exact sized uh, bore for making the uh, bearing surface of the bullet. That bore in here makes a .3763 diameter bearing surface on the bullet. And this tip is for the ogive. Now this fits in here And this fits on top. Before I do that, I'm going to show you how this works inside. So this goes in here like this. And it goes through here like this. And this is screwed into here. Which creates a stop. For this point forming die. So you can adjust it in and out for different sized bullets I make I have a couple here different sized this one is longer this is 150 grain this one's 120 grain 
that's adjustable in here. And the the length of the heel is also adjustable. Now I'm going to put this together. And I'll put on the magnifying glass. I think that was about there. Put these on here so it doesn't fall through when I when I'm working. I know this is probably not quite in focus because this is a fixed focus camera. And the focal length has got to be about 4 feet, and I'm only about 18, 20 inches. So I'm too close for focus right now. Now, I'm going to put on the magnifying glass. You'll notice this is the base die. I'm going to put on the magnifying glass to show you the rest of this. And move you down so you're in focus. Focal length on this is about two inches or four inches, I should say. Okay, here's what we were looking at. There is the the inside there. Point forming die. You can see, hopefully you can see in there. Now you notice this has got two diameters. One bigger diameter that terminates to the smaller diameter where the point forming die goes in or I should say the die itself. Now this fits inside there and you notice it's got kind of a raised lip. There's a purpose for that too. When this goes in here Notice it slides in the outer diameter very well. Nice fit. Now, it bottoms out where the start of the bullet diameter begins. So it squishes it until it hits that end. And when there's a bullet in here, or a, a, a core to be swaged, it'll swage that up in there like that. It doesn't have to ha have that shape when you put it in. It's, it swages it to that shape. I'll explain that more later. But anyway, that goes in there. And it bottoms out. And according to how you set this length is how much space it will give you before it bottoms out. So you want it to bottom out just after you use up all the space. That way it makes a perfect, it, it swages perfectly into the space that you have allowed. And when you do it just right, you do that so there's a little excess lead that squeezes out around the edges. And this lip here cuts it off like an anvil, pinches it off like an anvil. Now, this base die has a screw that goes in, that can move the... the, the um, hollow base forming ram or whatever you want to call it, anvil. It can move that up and down in there. You see there's space. See the length between the anvil and or the the hollow base forming die and the end of the swaging. That is the area that is the
the sear, the, the, the heel. And that's adjustable, so you can adjust the length of the heel by adjusting this. And right now I have it adjusted for 0.13 inches. Somewhere between 0.127 and 13. It's hard to measure exact. But anyway, <clears throat> so when you pinch that up in there, when everything is pinched in and this squeezes together with the press, everything gets pinched in. It pinches, um, it squishes or swages the bullet to where there's a just a little excess. You set it so there's a little excess lead. So it forms real nice and tight up in there. And there aren't any gaps or hollows or anything like that. And that makes a little bit of extra lead squish out around the edges. Like I said, with that thing. Now I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to put it in the in the um, the loading uh, thing and show you that. Okay here we are back at the uh, loading die, the, the loading press. I have that I have a, a core in there that I'm going to swage up in there. Now, I don't have the it exactly set. I just set it kind of. You see, now I'm going to get the, the uh, magnifier back on there to show you this. Now I had this this set. I had the, the, the die set too short for a hundred and fifty grain bullet. I had too much I had too much uh, excess lead coming out around it. You can see that big bonnet. That's all lead that squished out that would didn't fit in the space available. So now this, I don't know if I'll be able to pick this one off because it's so thick, but ordinarily I can just pick these off. Yeah, I'll have to work at a little bit, but that'll come off. Um, and if it doesn't, I can swage it harder and squeeze that. Like I said, that thing's like an anvil. Anyway, when I pick this little bonnet, ring around here off of excess lead this bullet will probably be around oh I don't know 130 grain 135 because I uh, put this too I made that space too short now I'll show you how that changes I'll remind you this Here is the stop. So if I unscrew it a little bit, I can adjust in to by to give it more room inside there. We'll try reswaging this one, although it's not going to work well because I've already swaged out all the excess. It might cut that off for me better though. Yeah, see that that'll come off very easy now. Oops, I gotta put that thing back on. Magnify glass. So that's the excess lead. And it squeezes out around the edge. And this is the bullets that I dropped. It swaged to the dimensions of the inside of that die. That's how it works.